Okay, would everyone please turn all cell phones off and electronic devices or silence them at the very least and rise for a moment of silence and pledge of allegiance. Thank everyone for the little surprise ceremony with my picture earlier. I had to sample all three cakes at the, at the little celebration. <laughs> Kevin said I look like a little boy, so I don't know if it means I look like an old man now or not. But yes. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. Uh, we have a special ceremony at the beginning of the session. Oh, roll call. I'm sorry, Jean. Go ahead. Roll call. Benelli? Here. Paduke? Here. Amo? Here. Anagnostakis? Present. Benton? Here. Cheney? Here. Fagione? Here. Hines? Here. Kulisek? Here. Luhan? Present. Minuta? Here. O'Donnell? Here. Riskevich? Here. Sassy? Here. Sierra? Here. Staganga? Here. Sutherland? Here. Tortell? Here. Tui? Here. Vero? Here. Brescia? Here. 21 present. Okay, we have a recognition award, a special ceremony today, a certificate, certificate, excuse me, recognizing the bravery and heroism of Village of Goshen Police Officer Brian Kelly. So I'd like to invite him up to the podium in front here. Legislator James O'Donnell, who represents the village and town of Goshen. Village of Goshen Police Chief James Watt. And Brian's family too, please come up. His father, his brother's here, and whoever else is here from the family, please come up to the front. Ian? Oh, is Ann? Oh, Annie Rabbit, too. I'm sorry. The, the county clerk, Annie Rabbit. Thank you. We're going inside? I read this article in the Times Herald Record about uh, what you did, Officer Kelly, and I was so impressed and I asked that you be here today because we certainly as a full legislature re respect all those in, uh, first responders and it's, it's always bipartisan, as uh, Chairman of Public Safety Kevin Hines will tell you. We have the utmost respect for the first responders and what you did that day uh, was truly amazing. I mean, you were off duty and you saw, you know, I, I get on that exit quite a bit by Fletcher Street, so I'm, you know, I, when I leave here and go to the gym sometimes. And uh, what you did was very impressive. You saved those, that gentleman and his wife's lives. Um, you said you didn't, certainly some first responders might say, I'm not gonna take the chance. You pulled in front of that car and you, and you really saved their lives. And you say that you're not a hero and that's a sign of a true hero, what you did. I mean, uh, and we, we salute you. Um, invited Chief Watt here today. He's my neighbor across the street in the village of Montgomery, and uh, I'm, I'm sure he's extremely proud, and he's gonna say a few words as well. Jim O'Donnell, who spent his, his, uh, most of his life in law enforcement, um, knows of your heroism, and we certainly salute you. And we have this certificate. I'm gonna let uh, Legislator O'Donnell present it to you, and uh, he's gonna say a few words, and then Chief Watt, and if, you're, if you wanna say a few words, you can too. So thanks, Chairman. Uh, as you uh, made reference to uh, my past uh, life in uh, law enforcement, 23 years with the state police and five years as the uh, chief of the MTA police, I gotta apologize to Brian's family behind me. But uh, I, I see him in a diner before I break. This on? It's on. You got that on tape? Perfect. <laughs> I know somebody probably looking for that. So anyway, uh, now I can see you. So uh, I always turn my back on the legislators. They, they, they get used to it, but you know, they, they prefer looking in this way anyway. But uh, law enforcement, so I'll just say two things about uh, 
uh, law enforcement in general, but uh, Brian's actions in particular. So the uh, number one crime prevention tool is uh, visibility, visibility, visibility. And the number one crime solving tool is tenacity, tenacity, tenacity. But now you talk about lifesaving. In police work, you really never know what you prevent sometimes. It's just by, by invisible. So I'm blessed that I live in a village and I have people like Brian patrolling every day and every night for me. Uh, the chief does a great job. I know the previous two chiefs, and uh, it's just a fantastic police agency. And Brian, you do all of uh, the men and women at the department credit. But to be able to go out and actually save lives and know that you were responsible for saving lives is a credit to uh, your families uh, bringing you up right. And that's exactly how I used to look in uniform, too. <laughs> so, <laughs> see that? Perfect. So, without uh, further ado, I'll hand this to you and thank you for your bravery, your courage, and uh, your humility. You're an honor to uh, the police agency. Thank you very much. <laughs> and with that, I'll have Randy Rabbit. It's an honor to stand here with the hero. We all know Brian, and anybody who heard the story or read the story said that's exactly what Brian would do. Everybody who knows you knows what a great guy you are. You have a beautiful fiance, beautiful family, you're a volunteer fireman. Each and every time that I see you in Goshen, I think you represent the people with your heart. You showed it that day, Brian, and we're so proud of you, and we're happy to be here. So I have a citation from the clerk's office, and Senator Bonasek also sent you a citation, and he's very proud of you. We love you, Brian. Thank you. I just have to say that uh, the Village of Goshen Police Department is extremely professional, and I'm always impressed with them. And uh, Chief, you do a great job. This really represents you in a positive, extremely positive light. I'd like to thank um, Chairman Brescia and Legislator O'Donnell for inviting me here today to introduce Brian. Uh, Annie really sat, say, uh, summed it up good. She took all my material. Everybody knows Brian and his family. Everybody loves Brian and his family. He, um, he was a hero. He is a hero. Every day he goes out, he is a hero. He gives 100% every day. Uh, everyone that heard about this incident before they knew it was Brian, knew it was Brian because that's the way Brian is. I just want to um, briefly recognize several members of the department that have turned out to support Brian and Ken Newbold from the town of Goshen where this heroic action actually took place is here today too to help honor Brian. So uh, I'm very proud to work with Brian. I just want to offer him my congratulations on behalf of the Village of Goshen Police Department and the community of Goshen. Well done, Brian. Well, anybody that knows me, this gives some kind of a shock because I'm not going to be long-winded with this conversation as I usually am, but I just want to thank everybody who's in attendance today. My, my parents, my fiance, my dad, my mom, my brother. Uh, dad, you know, I got all the bravery I have because of you and mom's leadership to our life, so <clears throat> thank you for that. Excuse me. Um, Chief, thank you for your leadership. Uh, my sergeants in the back and the officers who are here from my agency and former agency. Uh, I, I owe a lot of this to you guys, and I know that with 100% certainty that if any one of you were with me the day that this happened, you would have been right in the car with me. I, I say that with 100% confidence, so I, I, I truly don't look at myself as a hero uh, in this situation. I just did what any one of us would have done, and I, I've said that once, and I've said it a uh, hundred times. I'm just glad I was in the right spot at the right time and able to help the people that were there, so that's about what I've got. Um, my father, Brian Kelly Sr., my mother, Eileen Kelly, my Twin brother Jimmy, who's 12 minutes older, he wants me to tell you that, I guarantee it. Uh, my lovely fiance, fiance Christina Jordan. Um, I've got friends back there, it's Carrie Murphy. Um, my Sergeant Conklin, one of our new guys, Jake Manna. Uh, Greg Hellerman, Chris Smolsey, Sergeant Ryan Rich, and my chief. They're all in attendance, and thank you very much. I'm not missing anybody, am I? Uh, okay. I got everybody, okay. Well, thank you very much for coming, everybody. Appreciate it. Thank you. 
Very inspiring. Um, Majority Leader Benelli? No speakers signed up, by the way, for before, one for after. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move to approve the minutes of March 1st, April 6th, and May 3rd. Second. All in favor? Aye. Carried. Okay, are there any referrals, withdrawals, or consents? Legislator Benton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I request consent to place on the agenda a resolution making findings and setting a date for a public hearing with respect to modifying previously approved funding for a flood control maintenance project for Quaker Creek, towns of Goshen, Wewayanda, and Warwick by reducing the appropriated amount of $100,000 for such purposes and reallocating the remaining funding for the Wallkill River flood control bench project. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, that'll be QQ2. Okay, where are we here? A, receive and file. Oh, okay, Minority Leader Baduke, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I would also request to place on our agenda a consent resolution authorizing the formation of a special committee consisting of the legislative chairman, the majority leader, the minority leader, party leader, and legislative council to review amendments to local law number five of 214, which is pay to play law, which includes, but not limited to, the addition of limited liability companies and LLC partnerships to section two, definitions, letter D, titled professional business entity, and any other amendments researched by legislative council. After review, this committee will make recommendations to the Rules Committee for input and review at their next regularly scheduled meeting. Is there a second? Second. Okay, let's vote on uh, placing that on the agenda. I'm not gonna make that unilateral decision. A roll call, no vote is not. Point of order. Okay, then I'm gonna deny it then. Okay, and I can't vote on my uh, correct ruling. So a yes is to put it on and a yes is to override my ruling. Okay, and a no is to agree with me, basically. Roll call. Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Yes. I would like to ask um, that we uh, call for a caucus meeting, please, of the Republicans. Okay. Just five minutes? Five. Ten minutes? Five. Okay. Yes, thank you. Or granted. Okay, we're back in session. Um, before we go to discussion on my ruling, which is what the discussion pertains to, I will ask uh, Antoinette to clarify a yes vote and a no vote. Uh, just to uh, bring us back to center, uh, the uh, chairman denied the uh, request to place on the agenda the consent resolution uh, proposed by uh, Mr. Paduk and seconded by uh, Ms. Tortell. Um, and so now we're going to do a roll call vote on it. And so if you vote yes, it is to override the decision of the chairman, uh, which denied uh, the uh, placement of the resolution on the agenda. If you vote no, then you're agreeing with the uh, chairman and uh, you are not going to override his decision. So if you vote yes, you want to override the chairman. If you vote no, you agree with him and you don't want to override. Okay, it's just a little confusing. When you say no, you agree with me. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, discussion on my ruling only. Uh, Legislator Fagione. <clears throat> Thank you, Chairman. Chairman, this action here as it stands is an attempt to create a committee, which is the role of the legislative chairman. Number two, this issues discussed in this action are issues for the, rule co the rules committee. 
a statutory committee that currently exists. Thank you, Chairman. And Legislator Amo, caucus leader Amo. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I agree with uh, Mr. Uh, Legislator Fagione on, on the authority of the Rules Committee. However, I think this issue needs to be settled, and I think it needs to be settled once and for all. I don't know if it came before the Rules Committee, which I said on, I would vote for it, probably not, or I would have been pushing it with Mr. Paduk, but I think it should be heard. Any other discussion? Yes, Minority Leader Paduk. <clears throat> Uh, just a little background information here. Um, when we uh, addressed this issue before and after it was determined that there would be no change to local law number five of 14, <clears throat> I asked the chairman who ruled myself if we could bring it back to committee in the following months uh, to readjust and talk about the loophole of LLCs. Uh, I was told at that time it was a possibility, but that he was going to wait until uh, the Senate and the assembly voted on it. I will tell you that the assembly voted it on the last five years in favor of addressing the issue of LLCs. Uh, after that, I went back to the chairman and he said, absolutely not. We'll talk about it at um, one of our other meetings, which we did, it's a round table, right, which we did, and it was just left in limbo. So I followed all the procedures to try and get it back to the committee to discuss some amendments, some changes, some additions. Uh, I was denied the fact, which is why I brought it today by consent. Uh, not meaning to put anybody on the spot or whatever, but I followed all the rules, and unfortunately, uh, it's come to this today. <clears throat> okay, Legislator Nain Nostakis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. place mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as the author of the pay to play law, I certainly support closing the LLC loophole. I don't think any such loophole existed uh, when we actually created the law. Um, the, the problem I have here today, as was stated um, by others, um, unfortunately, the charter is what we live by in this county. And the authority to create and form special committees lies solely in the hands of the chairman of the legislature. And for that reason, I will not be able to support this today. Thank you. Jim, correction, the, the discussion, Jim Kulsek, is on, is on my ruling, not on the consent re resolution itself. Okay, yes. Just one other comment. I did speak with the chairman regarding this, and he referred me to the chairman of rules, which is why I just explained how this all came to be. Okay, I just wish we had a heads up on this before the meeting. Roll call. Benelli. No. Paduke. Yes. Amo. Yes. Anagnostakis. No. Benton. No. Cheney. No. Fagione. No. Hines. No. Kulisek. Yes. Luhan. Aye. Minuta. No. O'Donnell. No. Briskevich? No. Sassy? No. Sierra? No. Stadenga? No. Sutherland? No. Tortel? Aye. Tui? No. Vero? No. Brescia? No. I'm sorry, you don't. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Sorry. It's too tempting. <laughs> Six eyes, 14 no's. Okay, on to QQ1, which is a bond resolution requiring two thirds vote. Legislators Paduke, Tui, Benton, and Benelli. Amending bond resolution dated May 3rd, 2018. Amending the bond resolution adopted March 1st, 2012 in relation to non-highway paving at county-owned facilities for the Department of Public Works. Okay. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Luhan? Yeah. Menuda, O'Donnell, Briskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Stiganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, 1A receive and file, um, number one, which is a local, I'm sorry. QQ2, I'm sorry, the one that Lee added. Resolution making findings and setting for a public hearing with respect to modifying previously approved funding for a flood control maintenance project for Quaker Creek. 
towns of Goshen, Wayweanda, and Warwick by reducing the appropriated amount of 100,000 for such purposes and reallocating the remaining funding for the Walk Hill River Flood Control Project. Second. Discussion? Yes, Ruskevich added. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulasek, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Steganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, now number one, which is a local law. Legislators Amo and Benelli, local law introductory number seven of 2018. A local law fixing the compensation of party leader other than majority or minority leader of the Orange County Legislature effective January 1st, 2019, pursuant to section 2.02S of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Point yes. Point of information, this was this passed previously, but we're a month, we're just changing the date. Is that the deal? Is that the? It actually never came to the floor of the legislature, right, right. so Thank now you. it's here before you. We did change the uh, date, so the effective date is not November 1, 2018, but January 1, 2019. I think that, and not to continue, I think that's incredible. If those, those of you might want to find an interesting reading in this morning's New York Times, A21, had a whole story about the Independence Party and its impact on New York state politics. Uh, something I didn't know, but there are over 500,000 registered Independence Party members in the state of New York um, and have voted in the numbers of 140,000 in gubernatorial elections in the last two, two term cycles. So it's really a large number, and I think in reference to what was said previously, uh, the, the role of third parties in New York State is really growing, uh, much different than some of the other states that don't recognize the role of third parties as there's cross-endorsing entities. Uh, and so I think it, we're doing the right thing. Obviously, I, I'm going to benefit, but we're doing the right thing by recognizing that the Independence Party of the state of New York has got its ground on, its feet on the ground in Orange County by identifying a, a member of their party uh, to be recognized in the legislature. So I'd appreciate all the support I get for this. Thank you. Thank you. Roll call? Point of yes, point of information. Can, uh, can our attorney please um, tell me what the uh, our charter section 202 s how it defines the party leader? It's pursuant to the uh, New York State election law. Um, was that changed by us in the no. past? No. Three? It, it, was that changed the three? I'm not sure I understand your question. Um, do we define how many people have to be in the party to qualify as a party leader? We do not. There was, uh, years ago, when uh, this issue first arose, uh, the first resolution that we adopted, I think it was in February of, of that year, and I don't have it. Mr. Paduke, do you happen to have that year available with you? Local law number six of 204 said only party leaders with the two highest numbers of members in the, of the legislature shall be entitled to compensation as provided by that law. Okay, and that was in what, in what month? I'm sorry? What, what month of that year? Um, I don't know, it says up 204, doesn't say it. Okay, in, uh, in, uh, in December. In, uh, Regular session December uh, in, of, of 208. No, and then oh, we sorry. changed it. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. And then we changed it in December. So we did that in February, I believe it was. And then in uh, December, we went back and revisited that issue and removed that provision. So you don't need, it can be a party of one under uh, our rules. Uh, so. A roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? No. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Same. Benton? Yes. Cheney? No. Fagione? Hines? Kulasek? No. Lujan? No. Menuda? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? No. Sassy? Sierra? Steganga? Sutherland? Tortel? No. Tui? Vero, Brescia, 14 ayes, 6 noes, 1 abstention.
Okay, 2A, receive and file number two, which is also a local law. Legislators A. Mombinelli, local law introductory number eight of 2018, a local law fixing the compensation for the chair of the Green Committee, a special committee of the Orange County Legislature, effective January 1st, 2019, pursuant to section 2.02S of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? No. Benton? Cheney? No. Bagione, Hines, Corsac, Luhan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Riskevich, no. Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortell, no. Tui, Vero, Russia. 17 ayes, 4 noes. Okay, number three. Legislators Vero and Hines, resolution confirming the reappointments and appointments by the county executive to the Orange County Planning Board, pursuant to section 9.03 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Yes, uh, Fagione added. Okay, roll call. Uh, O'Donnell added. Roll call. Vanelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulasek, Luhan, Aye. Menuda, yes. O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortell, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. And number four. Legislators in Agnostakis, Amo, O'Donnell, Sutherland, Tui, Staganga, Sierra, Tortell, Fagione, Vero, Cheney, Benelli, Hines, Kulasek, and Paduke. Resolution creating the Orange County Legislative Special Committee on Opioid Addiction, a special committee of the Orange County Legislature, pursuant to section 2.02Q of the Orange County Charter and Article 4, Paragraph G of the Legislative Manual. Yes. Legislator Sassy, do you want to say a few words? Yes, Your speaker on Robin. I've been speaking to Chairman Brescia for quite a while, uh, right after I was elected. There's not a day that goes by, as we all know, in our county where we hear another tragic story of an opioid overdose, uh, young people dying. Uh, it affects every single community in Orange County. We, and some people may ask, well, why are we creating another four? It's not really a task force, it's simply an oversight. It's a, it's a committee designed to do a few things because we have many great people and many great organizations in Orange County already existing and doing great things. But again, the tragedies continue every single day. So um, this went through a couple of committees. I appreciate the bipartisan support from everyone. Uh, I'd like to move forward on this, create the committee as a vehicle, and I like to use the word vehicle, to do the following, to raise awareness, even though we're aware of it, but what is going on in each and every one of our communities? I'd like to raise the awareness Prevention, education, and treatment. And bring everyone together, bring those professionals that are operating now in our county to the committee to inform us. And as we know, we have the power of the pen and the power of the purse and the legislature to help them out. Because if we save one life, isn't it worth it? Thank you. So I'd like to ask that all legislators be added. Is there a problem with anybody? Okay, okay, thank you, Katie. Okay. Legislator Nangstakis, did you want to say something? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I wanted to thank Legislator Sassy for uh, moving on this. Um, he came before our committee, made a great presentation, and I was glad that everybody supported this. Um, I look forward to the work that that committee does, and uh, my committee, the, as chairman of the Health and Mental Health Committee, I have an um, invitation, or will have an invitation to the chairman of that committee to come before our committee once every quarter and give us updates, report on what's going on, inform all the uh, members of the Health and Mental Health Committee, and I hope uh, moving forward, if and when there's a different chairman of that committee, that they would uh, continue that policy, because I think there'll be great work done in uh, this new committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Party Leader Amo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Obviously, I voted for a committee and will support it now and encourage others to support it. I'd like to you know, put on the record that we all just received in our, 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 our mailboxes the NISAC conference for Rochester, New York in September. 
and there are three dedicated programs to that topic. One is battling the epidemic, opioid and heroin addiction, and the other is overdose prevention and training, uh, as well as addiction and dealing in the correction services. So it would probably behoove Mr. Sassy to catch a train to uh, Rochester and hear what the rest of the state's doing. Absolutely. Yeah, I too would like to thank Legislator Sassy for uh, bringing this to the fore. It's, a, it's an issue that's close to all of us, but especially close to him, and he's, he's very passionate about it, and I I'm sure the, the committee's gonna be very proposive and, and move forward in a positive direction. Okay, uh, Legislator O'Donnell, you wanna say a couple words too? Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Legislative Sassy. Uh, it's uh, gonna be uh, very informative for the public. It's uh, needed. Uh, one of the things I speak about uh, just about every day now is a public service announcement before I get into the politics is that uh, every family should have an Arcan kit as part of their first aid kit and certainly every commercial building uh, right next to the defibrillator should have an Arcan kit so we should put that out as a public service announcement from the county uh, encouraging everyone we shouldn't have to wait for the committee. The committee will come up with some great ideas as far as education and uh, treatment, but we should put something out now encouraging everybody to get a Narcan kit in every commercial building. So uh, I would make a proposal to uh, look into putting out a resolution for that with us in the county exec's office. Thank you. Certainly, I agree with that. Absolutely. Roll call. Nelly. Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yep. Nagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulasek? Lujan? Aye. Minuta? O'Donnell? Briskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Steganga? Sutherland? Totel? Tui? Vero? Brescia? 21 eyes. We're going to number five. I just, I was remiss, uh, Katie brought this to my attention, but thank you, uh, Legislator Kulisek, for bringing our attention about the wall coming through Orange County and being at the Newburgh waterfront. Uh, we know that you have, are involved in many veterans' causes. Um, it came through the village of Montgomery, very poignant. We had a great crowd, three-mile motorcade, came right by in front of the government center just before that. Um, just very poignant. Um, it, show, it had shivers going up your, bond, your spine, I'm sure. But thank you for you bringing that to our attention. So. Okay, number five. Legislators O'Donnell and Tui. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Health to accept and appropriate grant funds from the New York State Office of Children and Family Services pursuant to section 99-H of a general municipal law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Discussion, Janet, you wanna be added? Okay, Lori added, Kevin Darian added, Mike Paduke added. Okay, roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulasek, Luhan, Aye. Minuta, O'Donnell, Riskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Steganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number six. Legislators Stenanga and Sutherland. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Health to accept and appropriate grant funds from the New York State Department of Health pursuant to section 99-H of a general municipal law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Yeah. Uh, Totel added, uh, Minuta added. Okay, um, Kevin Darian added. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yep. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulasek? Luhan? Minuta? O'Donnell? Riskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Steganga? Sutherland? Tortel? Tui? Vero? Brescia? 21 eyes. Okay, number seven, a bond resolution. Legislators Tartel and Amo. Resolution making a supplemental appropriation to the 2018 county. Point of order. It's not a bond resolution. Yeah, it says it on my sheet here, but it's not. We voted for that to be paid. Actually, uh, 
Pursuant to our uh, legislative manual, anytime you amend uh, the capital plan uh, and uh, reappropriate or abandon a project, uh, it requires a two thirds vote. So it's a two thirds vote, but not a bond, not a bond resolution, yes. Yeah, so we only need 11 votes. No, two thirds. No, you need two thirds. Yes, but it's not a bond resolution. We are not bonding. Okay, yet. is this what we're going to be doing from now on then with Valley View? Okay, just just when we amend the capital plan, it becomes a bond resolution. Okay, I follow. No, it's not a. Or, okay, yeah. It's a voting change. It's a voting change. Okay. All right. Sorry. Roll call. A discussion. You want to be added or yeah, Kevin Darian, Luan added, Janet's added, Kathy Staganga, Peter added. Okay, roll call. Benelli. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnes? Yes. Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulasek? Luhan? Aye. Menuda? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Staganga? Sutherland? Tortell? Tui? Bureau? Brescia? 21 eyes. Okay, number eight. And you'll see a mass exodus for the door, probably from those that group over there <laughs> right after this resolution. Legislator Sassy, Lujan, Benton, and Benelli. Resolution adopting a budget for the Orange County Community College for fiscal year 2018 2019 and providing for the raising of taxes required by such budget, pursuant to section 6304 of the Education Law and Article 4 of the Orange County Charter. Discussion? Pagione? Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I'd ask that uh, my name be added as a co-sponsor of this, please. And I'd also just like to uh, thank the community college for the presentation today and to remind all of the citizens in Orange County that we're very proud to say that Orange County Community College now sits in Port Jervis with a satellite campus, and it's something that we can all take pleasure in. I ask all my colleagues to support this budget and vote yes. Thank you. Okay, Minority Leader Paduk. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In our review with our auditors regarding the Orange County Community College budget, um, there were some things I'll just point out that affected the way uh, I vote. Let me first just say I know you guys do a great job at the college. However, my responsibilities here as a legislator consider uh, our fiduciary as well to the people I represent. And in, in their booklet, they talked about it is especially important for the college to continue to evaluate the ratio of faculty and support staff to enrollment. Personal services will continue to remain the largest area of expense in the budget. The growth in the cost of fringe benefits, especially health insurance and possible impact of the settlement of open labor contracts, which is what my comments are, are going to be on. I asked for some information regarding uh, in the, uh, the college in regards to health insurance, and I received it this morning. Um, I, I hope it's accurate, and I hope I did my math correctly here. But as I read it, you, I was sent information regarding employee groups of staff chair, faculty, civil service, grant, and management confidentials. And from the totals, I'm reading that there are 196 that currently contribute on an average of 9%. There's 146 that don't contribute, and 18 are in management. Now, we all know that health insurance costs are a critical part of anyone's budget. And I suggested in that meeting that maybe they uh, address it because they are addressing new contracts, which also aren't included in the new budget. Any, any negotiations that say there's an increase in salaries or whatever it turns out to be is not included in this year's budget for OCK. And the health insurance costs, uh, I think we, the legislature itself showed in 212 how important it is for everyone to pay a, their fair share of some sort of cost. And I'm hoping to encourage the college to, uh, during their negotiations with their personnel, to encourage them to contribute at least that 9% as well, which will reduce maybe some of the offset that you're asking the county for. Uh, thank you. I just have to say, you brought that up at least twice on Tuesday, and I think they heard you loud and clear in their next negotiations. I mean, it's too late to, you know, to hold up the budget for that, and that's probably what Paul's gonna say. I, I they did hear you loud and clear. I, I, I know they did. I was saying to look into hold up the budget. I was encouraging them to do more in regards to healthcare in the budget, and like we just, 
Let it pass over our heads that they're negotiating new contracts. We don't have any idea what those costs might be. So there might be some additional costs, which could be around the two million mark already for their for their uh, fund balance. So there's some concerns there. I think we all should have, and it has nothing to do with how how good they are with education. It has everything to do with our responsibilities as legislators. I agree with you, and, and Commissioner Gross will look at that seriously too, because he'll be part of that negotiating team. Legislator Riskevich. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first of all, could you add my name to this? Um, yeah, I'd just like to say uh, I think we had a very good uh, presentation by the auditors the other day, and we had a very good discussion uh, after that. Uh, in terms of, you know, the health insurance, I know, um, you know, there, those contract negotiations are ongoing at, uh, at this moment. Um, the outcome of those negotiations aren't going to be known before uh, the college has to submit their budget to the state, and of course they weren't known at the time they were preparing the budget. So uh, yeah, we, yeah, we can be hopeful that there's going to be changes there. I'm sure there will be. Um, but you know, as far as the budget goes, I think it's a good budget. Um, there's a lot of good things happening at the colleges. They do have their challenges in terms of uh, enrollment, um, things like that. Um, but uh, they are addressing those challenges. Uh, there's good things happening in college. I think the, uh, the satellite campus in Port Jervis is a prime example of that. I know there's going to be other good. Uh, Good things happening there in Newburgh. Um, you know, this is our college. You know, we all have constituents uh, who are sending students there. So um, I would also encourage everybody to support this budget. Thank you. Okay, Tautel added, um, Sierra added, uh, Kevin Darian, did you want to speak or you want to? Okay, okay, Renuta added. Oh, you want to speak, but I had Amo first, and, and you want to speak, or just Barry added, I'm jumping around here. Okay, Sutherland added. Saganga added. Okay, Party Leader Amo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Would you add me, please? Because I, I do support this. And I'm gonna make a comment that, that I think is, is really in support of the college, but maybe we all don't know it. And one of their hearings when they were inviting legislator, one of their meetings when they invited the legislator to come, and I've had this conversation with uh, Paul, is that we learned the very disturbing fact, at least I did, that a significant number, and I don't remember that number, I'm gonna say maybe 20, I can't, I won't even say that number because I'm sure, a very significant number of new admissions to the college require extensive remedial education, which requires them to provide special programs for people coming from Orange County high schools into the community college. That raises the cost of this budget more than a lot as well, I would imagine. But I think it's also directs our, should direct our attention to what kind of education our high schools are giving. That when kids graduate from the local high schools, they need and go to Orange County Community College, they have to take remedial education just to be able to survive in a post-secondary college environment. That seems strange to me. And, and I wish that the college would address it. And I, I know Paul and I have talked about bringing it up at the committee to see if we could talk about that. I don't know what the solution is, and I think everybody agrees with me in the numbers, but I think it's a real, a real uh, inflation factor for the cost of our college. And we have to pay a second time. We pay taxes to my Monroe Woodbury High School to educate the children, and then we pay again more money to the college to re-educate them because the high school didn't do a good enough job, apparently. Or I'd like to know what's happening. Thank you. I will vote for it. Okay, I've got two over. Kevin Darian, did you want you had your hand up first, and Joe Minuta. Okay, Kevin Darian, Joe, Jimmy O'Donnell, then Lee. So I just want to echo a few things that I, that I said in the last in the last uh, meeting. Uh, first, I want to thank um, the leadership that we've seen from the community college, um, the trustees, uh, and just the legislature. We had a very fruitful conversation, and I think, you know, when I when I when I heard about what we're seeing in Newburgh, when I see the expansion in Port Jervis, um, I see I see a college that truly understands and is truly listening um, to the community, uh, to the stakeholders, and so I'm encouraged. I think that we are definitely on the right track. We're moving in the right direction. Um, I'm definitely going to be voting in favor of this. Uh, I'm encouraged by, by how much support we are, we are hearing in this room. And um, so I, I, I firmly stand beside the college. And I, I, I definitely encourage any legislator who is on the fence on this to definitely vote in favor of this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I am in support of this in, in, in saying this. Um, the state needs to step up to the plate. Um, other than that, I think the college has done a great job. I think everybody else here has done a great job. And we've sort of been chasing our tails to figure this out 
only for the fact that we're just not getting the funding that we should be having. And I'd like to encourage the state to step up to the plate and support all of the colleges at this level, at the level they should be uh, donating. Uh, as far as the Newburgh campus is concerned and all the other campuses, we're doing a great job there. I'd like to see some of those programs uh, dispersed throughout the community, not just hyper-focused in Middletown. Uh, but other than that, I'd like to say thank you for the opportunity to speak on the subject. Thank you, Chairman. So uh, we do know what the contract negotiators are going to cost. The auditors told us that for every 1%, the uh, contract equals $150,000. And I'm sure uh, Steve Gross knows that as well as the college. Uh, no one likes uh, this wording, raising taxes. So unfortunately, the reason we have to raise taxes this year is because of just what uh, you said. Uh, the state is at just over 20% uh, where they should be at 33 and a third. So I'll again encourage the college to send us a draft letter that we can adopt and send to the state uh, where your fund balance is gonna be at a critical stage uh, affecting your accreditation, which in turn will affect the education and job opportunities for our uh, future, our students and our uh, young children here going to the college. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will be supporting this uh, budget today, uh, but again, I did have the discussion with Mr. Amo because I was not able to make that meeting where uh, that was uh, issue was brought forth. Uh, but I had this, I did point out that was my, one of my pet peeves as well, and uh, in the leadership meeting with the uh, auditors. Uh, I believe the state education laws should be changed so that Orange County and the community college can charge back the school districts for the uh, amount of money that we are spending on the remedial programs from people, or ch uh, young adults in um, the school districts that are, you know, can't do the college grade work. Roll call. Oh, I'm sorry, Majority Leader Benelli, I'm sorry, Katie. It's quite all right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first of all, my first point had to do with the state involvement and them not paying their fair share. And I thank Legislator Menudo and Legislator O'Donnell for addressing that. Um, but the other thing that I've noticed, um, I've been here, this is my ninth year, and dealing with the college. And I have to say over the last two years, I think that the college administration as well as the trustee leadership have done a remarkable job in trying to communicate with all of us and explain their positions and really outline it. This year in particular, they reached out to a number of us to meet with us individually and actually go through the problems of, of their budget. They understand it. I have full faith and trust that they really do get it and they're trying to make as many accommodations as they possibly can and keeping the rates down as much as they can as far as for all the taxpayers of Orange County. So I urge them, and I believe that they will continue that. We also just appointed three, I think three new trustees, and I have high hopes that they will continue to work with us very closely so that we can keep an eye on, an eye on this, especially during the contract negotiations. So I am in full support of this budget, even though it was a little different than we anticipated it would like. <laughs> I have to concur with the majority leader, too. They have been proactive in reaching out to the legislature and uh, they brought a few ideas to us early in the week, and uh, we're, they're going to be presented to the legislature, I believe, in September or October. No, September, I believe. Right? And I think you're going to be excited about a few of the ideas. Roll call. Vanelli? Yes. Paduk? I'm going to stay. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Yes. Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Yes. Hines? Pulisek? Luhan? Aye. Menuda? O'Donnell? Riskevich? Yes. Sassy? Sierra? Staganga? Sutherland? Yes. Tautel? Aye. Tui? Biro? Yes. Brescia? 20 ayes, 1 abstention. Okay. Ellen, you sure you don't want to stick around here more of our great conversation today? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll send you a tape if you really want. <laughs> okay, number, congratulations. <laughs> okay, number nine. Legislators Benton and Anagnostakis. Resolution authorizing the private sale and conveyance of certain county owned lands acquired by reason of a failure to redeem said land from a tax sale to Orange County 
pursuant to section 10184 of the real property tax law and Orange County amended local law number two of 2010. Sorry. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Aye. Paduk? Aye. Amo? Yeah. Anakistakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulasek? Lujan? Aye. Minuta? No. O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortell, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 20 ayes, one no. Okay, number 10, bond resolution. Legislators Benelli, Ruskevich, Benton, and Minuta. Bond resolution dated August 2nd, 2018. Resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing the acquisition of various fleet replacement and equipment for the Department of Public Works stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 181,000, appropriating said amount therefore and authorizing the issuance of 181,000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Second. Discussion, Bureau added, roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulasek? Lujan? Aye. Minuta? O'Donnell? Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortell, Tui, Biro, Brescia, 21 eyes. Okay, number, uh, am I on? Just, I just, yeah, I thought so, 11. <laughs> 11, another bond resolution, two thirds vote. Legislators Benton, Paduk, and Sutherland. Bond resolution dated August 2nd, 2018. Resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing the blacktop resurfacing and or replacement of damaged blacktop at various county transfer stations for the Department of Public Works, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 250,000. Appropriating said amount, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 250,000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? <coughs> Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulasek? Lujan? Aye. Minuta? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Staganga? Sutherland? Tortell? Tui? Vero? Brescia? 21 eyes. And number 12. Legislators Fagione, Staganga, Benton, and Hines. Resolution increasing the petty cash fund of the Orange County Department of Emergency Services Emergency Management. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulasek? Lujan? Minuta? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Staganga? Sutherland? Tortell? Tui, Vero, Brescia, 21 eyes. And number 13. Legislator Sassi and Fagione. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Emergency Services, Emergency Management, to accept and appropriate grant funds from the New York State Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Services, pursuant to section 99-H of the general municipal law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Bureau added, Paduk added, Vanelli added, Staganga added, Tuttle added, Peter added, Joel added, Kevin Darian added, Joe Minuta added. You get all that? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. It'd be easier to say who wasn't added. Right? Okay, roll call. Vanelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Magnus Takis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulasek? Lujan? Aye. Minuta, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortell, Tui, Vero, Brescia, 21 eyes. Okay, number 14. Legislators Benton and Sassy. Resolution confirming the reappointments and appointments by the county executive to the Orange County Human Rights Commission. Second. Vero added, Kulasek added, all Republicans, I'm sorry, that makes that easier. Uh, Paduk and Kevin Darian, and Sierra, and to, to all Democrats, is there all Democrats, all, easier. Independents. all independents, everybody. <laughs> okay, roll call. Benelli? Yes. 
Paduk, yes. Amo, yes. and Agnostakis, Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulisek, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Riskevich, Sassy, Sierras, Deganga, Sutherland, Totel, Chewy, Vero, Brescia. 21 ayes. Okay, number 15. Legislator Sassy, Riskevich, Lujan, and Totel. An act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to reclassify aging services specialist part time to aging services specialist at the Orange County Office for the Aging, pursuant to section 2.02i of the Orange County Charter. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Amo? Yes. And Agnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulasek? Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Riskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 21 ayes. Okay, number 16. Legislators Benton, Tortel, and Benelli. An act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to reclassify principal clerk to associate clerk at the Orange County Department of Public Works Division of Environmental Facilities and Services. Pursuant to section 2.02i of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Emo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulasek? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Riskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Staganga? Sutherland? Tortel? Tui? Vero? Brescia? 21 ayes. Okay, number 17. Legislators Totel, Riskevich, and Benton. An act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to reclassify two assistant sanitary landfill supervisors to assistant transfer station supervisors at the Orange County Department of Public Works Division of Environmental Facilities and Services, pursuant to section 2.02i of the Orange County Charter. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Aye. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yep. Nagnostakis? Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulasek, Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Riskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Totel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 21 ayes. Okay, number 18. Legislators Fagione, Sassy, Benelli, and Tui. An act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to abolish superintendent of solid waste and sewer operations and create transfer station supervisor at the Orange County Department of Public Works Division of Environmental Facilities and Services pursuant to section 2.02i of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulasek? Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Riskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes, Mr. Chairman, and the desk is clear. Okay, we have one speaker after uh, public, or for public participation, and that is ben Bennett Weiss, and public participation, excuse me, is the subject. I've seen that seal a hundred times, but today's the first time I noticed that there's an orange tree on there, which doesn't make much sense. We're not named after oranges. We don't grow oranges here. In fact, we're named after the Duke of Orange, uh, an English aristocrat who had utter disdain like the rest of his class for public input. So perhaps it would be more accurate to replace that tree with a portrait of the good old Duke that would be historically accurate and more reflective of the attitude collectively, uh, speaking now of this body. Um, I am appalled at how I was treated last week when I showed up literally one minute late and I was disallowed to speak at the end of the meeting. It makes no sense whatsoever to ask the public to come here and wait around to speak at a, on a non-agenda item when you could simply have them come up at, at any time during the meeting, have a table in the back, let them sign up and call their names. People come from great distances often to get here and we have personal problems that we have to deal with. It's not always easy to get I was literally one minute late. But to bookend that atrocious 
dis a disregard of, 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 uh, of a, a member of the public who wished to address you, at the end of the meeting, a group of us met in something called the community room downstairs. We asked a guard if we could meet there. A security guard said, yeah, go ahead, no problem. We were there, we had a discussion, about 10 of us, which, by the way, included a member of the legislator here. Uh, and uh, after a few minutes, a group of legislators passed by, noticed us in there within a couple of seconds after that, coincidentally enough, the same guard came back and said, you're going to have to leave. Why are we going to have to leave? You need a reservation to meet here in the community room. How do we get a reservation? Well, we I don't know. So this morning, I got here a little bit early. I went in there and I asked, how do you get a reservation for the community room? Well, guess what? Oh, the community room, and this is what I was just told at the, uh, at, in the office here by a secretary, the community room isn't for the community. The community room is for uh, employees in the building, and there is no way to get a reservation for the community room. The hypocrisy, the disregard for the public is disgraceful, but I don't have too much time, so I just want to read that despite your impediments here, something somewhat useful did come out of that meeting. And uh, this, we, we met afterwards, we were talking about um, immigration last week, so we had, we wanted to follow up meeting, and what came out of it is a resolution that you people may have already seen from Michael Sussman. It's a proposed resolution here. I'd like to read it out loud so it's in the record. Resolution, whereas the residents of Orange County, New York, have demonstrated their strong opposition to family separation policies implemented by the president, and whereas such policies have incalculable cost in human suffering and inflict trauma on innocent children and cruel and inhuman punishment on their parents, and whereas our county residents are generous in giving and would like to collectively extend assistance to those separated families. Now be it resolved that the Orange County Legislature condemns the family separation policy and supports the earliest feasible unification of affected families and hereby directs its chairman to write the President of the United States and offer the full resources of the county to assist families which have been separated. Resolution 2, which is a bit shorter, whereas the residents of Orange County, New York, fund the Orange County Jail and the sheriff who runs that jail, or as the jail was built with sufficient capacity to have hundreds of prisoners from outside Orange County, and whereas the jail has been used to house ICE detainees awaiting the process hearings and other legal proceedings, now be it resolved that the Orange County Legislature A, condemns and forbids the use of our jail for implication of any aspect of the family separation policy, B, orders its attorney to review and report within 30 days the status of any contract between Orange County and ICE, uh, I, I think I'm running out of time here. You're out of time. Uh, uh, so I'll, I'll wrap it up and I'll just say that it, it, among the many ironies here I found is that you begin this meeting Thank by you. honoring a police officer the meeting is adjourned. two lives while you collectively destroy so many lives.